Hey guys and welcome back to another episode of The Second Opinion. I'm your host, Jessica Ansari, and I'm joined by my co-host, Akira. Hey guys, I'm Akira. So, for this episode, we're going to be talking about running clubs online, hosting events online, etc, etc. And for that, we have some very special guests on board today. Guys, please go ahead and introduce yourselves. Uh, hello everyone, uh, my name is Arvind. I am the current president for the Philosophy Society. I'm in MBBS stage two. Hey guys, uh, my name is Shahzib Akhtar and I'm the secretary of the New Med Student Association of 2020-2021 and I am in MBBS stage two. So to start off, I wanted to ask our guests, what's your opinion on clubs in general? Like what do they mean to you and how do you think it affects student life at university? Okay, uh, so I think clubs are pretty much a, a sort of a gathering point for people with a similar interest, if that makes sense. So, you know, you, you obviously have like Indian society, you've got philosophy society, debate society. So people interested in specific things, they make a club, they come together, they hold events, uh, they try to celebrate their common interests. I think it's a great way to make friends, meet new people, especially because they already have some common interests with you. Alright, and Shazib, what do you think about it? So, for me, clubs and societies have meant a lot because for me, besides studies also, I always take my extracurriculars very seriously because that's just one of those ways to really, you know, get rid of stress, calm yourself down, and of course, find people who share common interests. So, my year one had me, you know, I had participated in a plethora of clubs and societies in New Med and met loads of people, made many friends along the way. Mm -hmm. For me, it has meant a lot in a lot of ways. So, yeah, I really cherish my experience in clubs and society and still do now. So, moving on, this year has been quite uncertain due to COVID. And, of course, it has been really difficult to conduct events online. But what are your experiences like? especially during this semester, how has it been to conduct um, most of the events online? Arvin? Uh, for Philosophy Society, I guess we were fortunately, so sort of luckily well-placed to almost take advantage. Uh, primarily because in, in philosophy, like the main things you will do is essentially write and talk. So we were well able to conduct events online. Uh, we had like recently, at least for this year, we've been having a philosophy cafe. We get people to just come in and just, just talk on philosophical topics, share their opinions, engage with other people, which is what the society is about. So you get to know other people and then you engage with them, their views. I mean, we've got quite a few events lined up as well. That's great. And Shazib, in terms of like orientation weekend and club fest, what do you think? So, like Arvin rightly said, you know, face-to-face -face events would have been much better, of course, but then the current circumstances do not allow that. And I think we've all come to terms with that also. And, you know, as humanity in general moves on and finds different ways, we have done that as well. And I commend the clubs and society for finding newer ways of engaging their audience as well, which is something that uh, I'm very proud of and I hold dear as well. The student association also had to take similar steps as well. Uh, so initially, when we were elected and appointed, we had to basically think of newer ways of doing the same, you know, events, which for us was a very daunting task because we have to, we essentially stand for the new med student body and representing each and every student is our job and finding those ways to engage each and every student, especially the newer juniors whom we, we had to connect with initially. Even for orientation weekend, we put a lot of hours into thinking about what can be done and in what ways we can involve everyone. And we hope that we had done a great job in terms of bringing everyone together and, you know, at least giving them a good start to the university social experience. And as for the club fest, uh, the student association has always valued clubs and societies because without clubs and societies, the student association 
essentially would not be able to, you know, cater to the needs of each and every student as well and their interests. So we're always highly indebted to the clubs and societies. And when we were thinking about doing something for club fest as well, we had a choice of, you know, we were thinking whether to do it or not to do it, but then we all realized that no, it should be done because clubs and societies need a way to essentially gauge their audience, find new members, find people of common interest once again. My next question is directed towards Arvin. I wanted to ask you about your philosophy club. You know, you started this club recently this year and I wanted to ask you, what was your inspiration for it? And, you know, how difficult was it to start this new club? Okay, uh, so the club was founded by uh, someone called Mohammed Wasim. He is a current foundation student at Newcastle University. He started the club essentially on Instagram. He was very new to the university, obviously. He hadn't even started his course at that time. And mm-hmm. yeah, so I, I sort of got to know it and I directly contacted uh, Mr. Wasim because I'm interested in the society and then I, I have sort of led the society before this and I sort of, and yeah, so we decided to start the club. We had to do the usual formalities and then that, that itself, I think, was the biggest hurdle is getting the initial committee at first. I mean, we didn't get a lot of applicants. We got some. Uh, so the rest of them I had to basically pull from my friends, from people I know who might be interested directly that I can ask. We got a decent committee going. Uh, and yeah, and, and the club was there. And then we had club fest. We recruited uh, members. Um, so Shazip, so I have a question for you. Um... So you have had previous experience being a secretary, be it in the debate society or SSC and other clubs. But how has it been in the student association and especially being it online? How ha- how have you been tackling it? Um, so yes, I have been the secretary of the debate society and the New Med International Society last year. And I'm very thankful to both of those clubs for giving me essentially the values and mannerisms of being a secretary and then carrying that on to a bigger platform being the student association. So I think one of the ways this job has been rewarding is that it's taught me a lot about time management because now that I have I've become a secretary, I have to deal with a lot of documentation, emails, contacting external organizations at times, um, liaising with the new med management at times to, you know, communi- essentially communicate with other people. And it's been rewarding that way. Uh, I've been learning a lot about time management, about clearly using whatever resources I have in the most efficient way. And that in itself has been a very humbling experience for me so far. And I can't wait for more and to see what's in store for me in semester two. Uh, semester so one so far has been, yeah, basically me balancing my student association work with my studies and yeah, I've been trying to find that balance and I think I've finally found it. I've been able to carry it with me, uh, doing my work for the student association and studying alongside and keeping on, you know, keeping track of all my lectures and, you know, seminars. So I believe that, uh, for all those listeners out there who actually want to be part of the student association next year also, uh, do not be scared of it. It's a very fun job and to be very honest, very rewarding. You'll enjoy it through and through. You'll learn a lot more than you can ever fathom before. Um, so, since you guys have been working for various, I think various clubs and, you know, doing events and stuff like that, what, what do you guys feel like about team cooperation online? Like, do you think it's better in person or do you think it's better online? Um, definitely, I think in person is better. Okay, here's the thing. I've noticed this both for obviously for clubs, and it's actually the same thing like with lectures and our course. I never really appreciated this, but it is always those minutes, like before a lecture or in a club sense, before a meeting or after you know those ten minutes after the meeting when everyone is chit chatting. That is actually like the team bonding. That is what pulls everyone closer and like makes everyone know each other and you can work better together. And with everything going online, it's like you lose it because everything is now so exact. It's like you join at this time, you leave at this time, and you just talk about 
like the important point. There's yeah. no real bonding there. To the point, like even in my own society, I had to like carve out the specific time and say, okay, guys, this is team bonding session. Let's just all come and just chat for half an hour. And that's what we did. And I don't know, I feel like it improved a lot because you know each other as a person now, not just like as a name in a WhatsApp chat. Yeah, I agree with I agree with what Arvin is saying because I think seeing someone is very important in the sense that it gives you like it's almost like giving you energy that you're actually speaking to that person but you're also seeing that person's face and then communicating. Because that's another level of, you know, understanding developing between the two of you. But like besides the challenges <laughs> and the tough parts, what do you guys think are the pros of working online? Definitely uh convenience. Because I mean like for me at least I live like half an hour away from university. So like if I had meetings before this, right? I had to stay back after uni. I couldn't go home and shower, something like that. Um and it was similar I think for basically everyone else. It was tiring essentially. But now with everything online it's very, very convenient. So it's like you can have a meeting anytime. Technically, because everyone's just at home. Um, so, yeah, it's, it has its own advantages and disadvantages. But I think looking at the positive side of being online, yes, I agree with Arvin a lot. It's that everyone is available at, at any point of time during the day, which is scary because we're all like almost all of us are medicine students. But then, yeah, uh, it does happen that way. That I think the part about traveling to university and then going out with everyone, it's, it's all gone. Uh, there should be like a term for it, like the missing missing hours or something. Like the time you spend traveling, the time you spend waiting, like all of that is gone. It's just like you can use the time to its fullest potential. So the next part is a little interesting. Um, so for those of you who don't know, let me give you a little bit of a background. Someone recently posted on Instagram saying that club inequalities is a thing. You know, the big clubs get away with a lot of things and um, the SA overlooks them all the time. And, you know, there's a difference in funding, you know, and all that uh, and all that stuff, you know. So um, to me, I mean, it seems pretty like, you know, there might be something genuinely wrong because, you know, someone's going all the way on Instagram to go and talk about it. So but I wanted to ask you guys opinion on it. If I remember uh, sort of the wording of the statement correctly from what you he has sent. Wait, can I just read it out? Is it okay? Yep. Yeah, sure. Just highlight the important points. Oh, well, okay. Yes, it's really long. Okay, so essentially what it says is that clubs, certain clubs have been given special treatment due to membership numbers and titles that they hold. And that the SA essentially ignores them when they break rules. Uh, but obviously, when a smaller club does it, the SA comes down hard on them. And, and primarily because uh, the, the post basically says that when smaller clubs uh, break rules, uh, they are punished and bigger clubs are ignored. They say that fund distribution should be more equitable. And I think something along the lines of recognition, etc. Okay, my views on this... Uh, I okay. I was the previous uh, president of the debate society. I'm not sure whether you would consider the debate society a big club or a small club. I'm the current president of the philosophy society, which you could consider a small and very new club. In terms of the rule breaking, I don't really notice that as much, at least for myself. I think that the SA has been fairly good at, at implementing rules because you have to understand the SA doesn't just put in rules for fun the rules are usually there for a reason and like I mean any rule that is there without reason gets attacked incessantly by the club presidents so it honestly doesn't stay for long um, but I'm not sure if like other clubs have experienced anything because the post from what I can read seems to be from like someone's personal experience or like personal so so it, it honestly could be an issue with a previous SA administration or uh, so so we just don't know there's no context there's no specifics it's very difficult to figure out what they're trying to say it's, it, you can't even say it's a baseless claim because I mean yeah you can say it's a baseless claim it doesn't really have a base you don't know what they're talking about, like which club or 
which specific SA administration, what rules are they talking about, that sort of thing. In terms of fund distribution, okay, as far as I know, this really depends on what the club wants to do. So when they are saying in the blue it's like smaller clubs, it's more of a chance to grow and shine. It is less about the SA and more about the club and club members and especially the club committee. So it, it is sort of survival of the fittest in that sense. If your club committee is very active, they hold a lot of events, right? And then for that, you need money and you ask the SA. They are usually considered in terms of how much money you ask. So it's not just a question of how many members you have. I think that, that definitely factors into the equation. But like even if you have 100 members, if you're just doing one online activity that doesn't require money, then they're obviously not going to give you money. But if you're doing a lot of events that needs money, mm-hmm. then you're going to get money. You know, we, we at the SA really hope that the clubs and societies are happy and we are able to play an important part in terms of providing them newer avenues and the right resources for them to conduct their events. So we're happy to hear that, you know, clubs and societies are able to prosper on their own as well and whatever they need, they've got it from us. Uh, we, we'd like to think that we've been, you know, fair to all clubs and societies. Uh, especially in terms of, you know, funding as well, because I cannot fully disclose as to how we decide on it. But when we do, we make sure that the clubs and societies, you know, mm-hmm. meet them met well with whatever is being provided. But having said that, you know, we, we're more than okay with, you know, talking to clubs and societies and, you know, reaching a mutually acceptable decision in terms of finding a common ground with the clubs and societies. To be honest, all of us, all of the members of the student association are homegrown in a way that we've all come from clubs and societies. We've learned as to what is required for clubs and societies, what the student association can do for clubs and societies. So we've all carried that experience and we essentially more of a comfortable route for clubs and societies to hold their event, especially during this time when all of the ways clubs and societies were able to usually make money have been essentially, you know, cut off. And they've, they've had to do a very commendable job in finding newer ways, most, you know, innovative ways of ex- engaging their audience. So if that is, that, if that is a cause of concern, we would really encourage whoever has raised this concern to tell us, talk to us how we can help them because, you know, we, we've always been open to feedback and we always will be because why else have we been elected by the people of New Med? It's only to serve them and serve to work for them and effect change in a way. That's what we are and that's what we are here for. What do you guys, what are your plans for the upcoming year? Like, although the situation is quite uncertain, I assume you guys have a lot of things planned out. So, what do you Okay. So, for the Philosophy Society, uh, we have quite a bit actually planned for next year. So we, I think, yeah, I, I think we, I can, I can just say this. Uh, this will basically be our first uh, publicizing of our events for next year. We have a philosophy month planned out for March 2021. We have a series of talks on a variety of topics uh, in terms of philosophy. We have a forum discussion on a very fascinating topic. I won't just reveal yet. If, if there are philosophy society members listening, then you will know the topic. Um, yeah, so, so we've got that and, and we've got the talk series. We are very excited. Uh, we've got some new initiatives going up on our Instagram. Again, lots of society members will know what's happening. Uh, so I, I really hope everyone looks forward to that. I would just say though that, uh, please don't think that philosophy is just sitting in a room reading the sea tomes. We are pretty much out there. We are very much. Uh, sort of engaging in societal issues, in, in sort of now issues, if that makes sense. Philosophy is never dead. It, it is quite literally the living and growing discourse of human thought. So we we are thinking of many ways of, you know, essentially engaging students as well in semester two. And we have planned ahead in terms of thinking whether uh, things are going to go back to normal in semester two, essentially the university opening and us being able to hold events and if that does not happen then we have events in mind as well uh, so 
you can say that we've planned for virtual and on-campus events also so far. This whole pandemic has brought a lot of negativity and we want to be that beacon of positivity in that way, provide a sense of calm and peace and, you know, of course, awesomeness so that everyone is able to enjoy their time over here. So uh, we we are looking into alternatives to certain, certain events. We are looking for essentially upgrading certain events also, finding ways to get everyone to be able to attend, find their time as well and all around just have fun so you'll be seeing a lot of you'll be seeing a lot of promotions uh throughout the month so look out for december january and february because we will have a couple of events that are more about you as in new max blues and yeah we hope to see you then now comes a fun part uh, that i have been where we ask you guys pretty stupid but uh you know kind of fun kind of question so <laughs> So I'm pretty sure you guys know how this works. I'm gonna ask you for this and you just tell me what your uh opinion is, okay? Alright. Oh, okay. Fine. I'm first, excited. first question we have is club fest or cultural, cultural fest. Cultural fest. Okay. Next up, um sanitizer or soap? Yeah, definitely soap. Tea or coffee. I, I don't drink mm-hmm. either. Uh, yeah. Debate society or new debate society. Wait, come again? <laughs> well basically what you're trying to say is that since you guys have worked for Debate Society before, Shazib, I think, was the secretary and yep. Arvin, you were the president for Debate Society. And now you're the secretary mm-hmm. and president somewhere else, respectively. So, what do you prefer more? Debate Society post or do you Oh, that is post? a no question. New books. Trail. No, I mean, something trail. <laughs> Moving on, I guess now we just come towards the conclusion for the episode. Um, it was great to have you guys on here and Thank you for the viewers if you made it this far as well. I uh, just wanted to ask you guys, do you have anything to say? Um, to okay, so all? first of all, thank you to Debate Society and the Debate Society podcast team for having us here. Uh, it was amazing, I think, yeah, pretty amazing experience. It was nice to talk. Um, to the viewers, I would say please join mm-hmm. uh, a club, any club, honestly. Find what you like. If there's nothing that you like, make a new club because that, that means that there is a market for it. Uh, enjoy yourself. But I'll say, just enjoy, support, yeah, have fun. That's it. Yeah. Um, I just want to say thank you to the Debate Society podcast team first of all for giving uh, Arvin and I this opportunity to essentially talk about certain topics, address certain things. And to the viewers, I would say that do join this podcast. Do find a time to try and vent yeah. as well because I think this is a very good platform for everyone to essentially speak about topics. And I believe that I've thoroughly enjoyed this podcast as well. So to the viewers, I would say, I hope you're all doing well wherever you are right now. And I hope to see you soon whenever the university is up. All right. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Uh, that was all for this episode. Wherever you are, in quarantine, at home, online, you know, good luck to you guys. Uh, stay safe, stay home. And yeah, uh, hope you guys uh, have a good one. All right.